Hey, 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 everybody. Michelle is here on this Saturday. I think it's March the 16th, 2024. Uh, on a Saturday, huh? These Saturdays um, are different from what, I, what I'm used to because every day uh, for me is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, I, in other words, every day of the week, uh, opens up opportunities for me to do things and get things done but at the same time you know sometimes your best intentions to get things done do not get done so this week has been rather uh, stressful for me uh, because of I do not like dealing with paperwork I do not like dealing with um, situations that involve uh, producing documentation for this, producing documentation for that. And so, and even if you make appointments to get these kind of things done, it doesn't mean it will get done. And that's where, that's where I am today. Um, was hoping to get some things taken care of and you know, that didn't happen. So now here we are facing each other. So I hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificently and marvelous nonetheless, because I am, I am doing fantastic despite that. But I was uh, annoyed uh, this week. Take my time with that. I was an annoyed this week uh, because, you know, like I said, I uh, make some appointments to get some things done, documentation, paperwork kind of stuff. And then I got conflicting instructions on what to do here, what to do there. And not to mention, my goodness, um, I've noticed a lot of companies have incorporated AI technology because uh, trust me I think most of the most of the uh, the annoy you know b being annoyed was because AI is interrupting everything and what do I mean by that well you you know and in in before we, we can call a place a, a entity let's say and um, usually we are put on hold for quite a bit of time and then eventually you get a live voice. Well, that's not happening. When I attempted to call certain places, AI technology will step in and say, hey, we have a large volume of calls, so you need to call back later. Boom. That's it. The call's gone. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, and so I came back later. And guess what? You need to call back later. Boom. And, and and the technology will just hang up on you. You know, you remember we used to push the uh, certain buttons and and then a, a live voice will come on? Nope, not going to happen. So I spent almost half a day doing that when I was hoping to get it resolved with the one phone call. That didn't happen. So there's a lot of things that are just happening <laughs> and then, and it's not a goddamn thing we're going to be able to do about it. I, I know that. And so it caused me a little bit of, like I said, I was annoyed. I got kind of stressed and then I made some mistakes. Hallelujah. All right. To evolve our consciousness, we have to go through trials and errors and make mistakes otherwise we are not uh, properly evolving ourselves so what does that mean well the only way you're going to learn and a lot of people have a have an issue with this is you have to make mistakes and mistakes have to be um, impactful enough that you snap out of it and snap out of your trance. Because I made a mistake that most people will not admit that they've made those kind of mistakes. And be woman enough to, whether the situation, whether I need to apologize to someone whether I need to think a, a different way about this, whether I need to 
handle this a little bit differently. You know, you have to go through all those kind of complexities of life. Otherwise, you're just walking, uh, walking zombies and going along and thinking everything is, you know, everything about me is, 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 is perfect. Or I don't make mistakes. You know, I used to hear that a lot too. A lot of people had an issue with that and still do. And a lot of people are trained, you know, when people are attempting to find the truth, a lot of people will use this illogical thinking mode of, if I need to find the truth to uh, with someone, I need to lie to them so that they can tell me the truth. You know, that kind of thing. Like, for example, law enforcement. Okay, I came from a law enforcement background. And... What you what is usually done is they want to know who did this and who who did that, and so they would use these certain techniques and integrate you know integrate people by lying to them and hoping that they will tell them the truth. And we do that a lot too. We test people that way. We'll accuse people of stuff without any evidence to support it, in hopes of you know getting a certain result. And as I said, we need to snap out of it. Snap out of our beliefs about things, our faith about things, our convictions, and suspend all of that. Suspend your ego. Because, if, if, see, back in, you know, in most cases, I usually when I have uh, wronged someone or caused some harm to someone, I didn't have a problem apologizing to them. I really didn't. That didn't bother me so much because little did I know I had managed my ego a long time ago. And the reason I managed and what caused me to uh, manage my ego is because I was working around a bunch of narcissistic sociopaths, psychopaths. Am I, you know, I mean, that's the truth there. And so Sometimes when you are faced with certain type of adversities, you know, you can either go one way or another. You can either become wise about that and say, okay, those behaviors and actions, and more importantly, those results do not suit me. So I'm going to do everything in my power to change that. And I have for the most part. Um, We all have assumptions about people. We all are bias towards people we we have our preconceived notions which is which can be devastating to interpersonal relationships when you have these preconceived notions about people and I have been uh, the target of a lot of preconceived notions I think for most of my life okay where I I have to go above and beyond just to prove that my word is a bond or that I have integrity. We, even in the midst of when the results speak for themselves. We all know that. You know, and a lot of people say, well, you're playing the race card or you're playing the gender card. And those are usually idiots people behaving in an idiot fashion and have not walked in my shoes or walked in the shoes of people that look like me. We have a lot of work to do on our interpersonal relationships, but it has to start from within. If you're not willing to look within yourself and be honest about yourself, then your efforts to improve your interpersonal relationships will fail every time. You'll believe that you are, that you found a, you know, you found the, the, the perfect partner, the perfect job, the perfect neighborhood, the perfect this or perfect that. But at some point you're going to get, you're going to receive impulses of experiences that are going to prove otherwise and cause you to go deeper, go deeper. So I have a lot of confidence in myself about what I'm doing and my skills and abilities and 
It's joyful to know that I can trust myself, you know. Um, for a lot of people, that's hard to do, you know. Like, um, like I said, this week was so stressful because I, I do not like dealing with details. I've said that. I'm more in a visual person, per se. I'd rather just work, focus on the creativity of things, you know, how I'm going to create this, how I'm going to create that. But when you have to handle personal information type situations, like, you know, make sure your documents are in, or in order, make sure you have the correct per paperwork, that kind of stuff bothers me. And then try to deal with it on the phone with somebody or even to deal with them with Zoom. That's difficult. I'm a face-to-face -face kind of person so that I can ask, so I can pick up the energy and then that way I can ask the appropriate questions without interference. Whether you're working on, where you're doing business on Zoom, whether you're doing business on the phone, you know, each area of uh, attempting to interact with people has has some interference. Cell phone is the worst too for me because. I cannot keep that phone up on my ears. I take it off my ears and I put people on speakerphone. But I usually do it in a private area where no one's around to hear it. But that's a, an illusion as well because someone's always listening. Someone's always watching and paying attention to what you're doing. So we are in a desperate spin of time. I mean, you know, desperate times create desperate situations which create desperate behaviors and actions and we all ought to we all are feeling the squeeze whether people want to admit it or not of the of the of what's happening because we are attempting to ignore it and say no the, nothing's existing the climate is fine there's nothing wrong with the climate over here in my neighborhood you know people will think that small there's nothing happening in, in my state you know when I told you Earth is an entity and you can see it as a brain and if something's happening on one side of the brain it's going to affect the whole brain so if there's war over in another country that war is affecting all of us all over this planet and everything else so you're going to feel crazy you're going to make mistakes and you need to make mistakes you need trial and error. And so what we have, especially with so-called intellectual minds, they'll deny it, of course. But the results speak for themselves, especially when it results to our climate destruction. For decades upon decades, it's been denied that, that what you see, sense, and receive is an illusion. That's what the so-called intellectual minds have been doing that to us for decades upon decades. Interfering with your grip on reality and teaching you to do not listen to your sensing. In other words, do not, what, what was that term they used to say? Do not believe your, your lying eyes. You know, your eyes are lying on you. They're lying to you. In other words, what you see is not what you see. And that and what comes with that is a whole lot of reflection because you really need to make sure that you are uh, that you do have a grip on reality and know how to, to discern stuff properly because people will flip all over you they'll flip all over you get you distracted over here you know got all this going on over here all this going on over there and you're trying to figure out oh you know and that's what this week this that that's what this week provided for me. You know, I made I made a serious mistake and I was able to own up to it and resolve it. Now, whether it gets the results I hope, that's only a matter of time. Time will reveal that. You know, sometimes uh when you've made some mistakes, sometimes the mistakes are devastating, you know. And that there is no way to necessarily uh, make it right. I should I should say, or so, so, so you know, 
and especially when it results to interpersonal relationships. You know, sometimes when people, uh, and and the thing as well is sometimes when people get, uh, say, falsely accused of stuff. That's perfect example, because of our assumptions and our preconceived notions, and sometimes when people are making. That's why that's why our law enforcement has to be revamped. Revamped, remanaged, you know. Otherwise things are not going to change. Perceptions are not going to change. People are going to still be pointing at certain people saying, "Okay, that person's guilty, that person's is not." And it's all based on preconceived notions, demographics, skin color, gender. So to evolve the consciousness, it just requires a lot of inner reflection. If you don't want to do that, then you might as well just forget about it and continue to you know, deal with business as you, you see fit. But I know that a lot of people that resonate with me, my sounds and tones, which I appreciate so much. All over the stars and moon and mountains, by the way. <laughs> my Los Angeles included. We want something different out of life. We want to make things right. And, um, you know, expand our base of what we think we know and how to be better people. Those of you that resonate on my sounds and tones all over the stars and moon and mountains again, I like to say that because, because, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, well, she's not getting a lot of views. She's not getting a lot of likes and, that, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand energy. That's, that, that's how I know that. But um, I know we want to, we want peace. We want love, freedom, harmony, proper abundance, you know, intimacy, love. And a lot of us are waking up to the fact that what we were told, what we were taught was nothing but a bunch of garbage. Intentionally. In some cases, ego based in most cases. We were not properly taught how to think properly. So a lot so a lot of things are becoming uncovered thanks to AI. You know, AI is gonna uncover all of it. And AI unfortunately has the upper hand on everything. So even your best intentions are gonna be fruitful to stop all of this. The damage has been done. But I sense that, uh, you know, if you do everything you can, you know, to make things right, you stay righteous, you stay grounded in your reality, you're going to be able to, you know, I mean, survive, so to speak. You know what I mean? You're going to get through things the best way you can. You know, you're going to be stepping on some people's toes. That's because of the volume of people. You know, I, and I notice a lot of people are picking that up. That you think you're going to a peaceful park, you know, and to enjoy nature with the animals. Ha! And you realize thousands upon thousands of people are there. <laughs> what? <laughs> but when you see the brochures and stuff, it, it appears that you're the only one there. You know, that's the illusion we have. That's the, It's a delusion because it's not, you know. It doesn't exist anymore. Anywhere you go these days <clears throat> that's considered public access, it's going to be thousands upon thousands of people there. Okay? So you can go and go on off hours. You can you can still, you know, if you're going to popular places, trust popular parts especially. Mm -mm. <laughs> and it's so funny that people, you know, when they do travel like that, they always pick, you know, they always pick the pictures to post that show that they're the only ones there, that, that illusion at least. And that's fine. You know, we, we are, we do what we do. I've done that, you know. Uh, I'm not going to pick up everything that's, that I see because it would be, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we don't like to share those. We don't like to share the garbage and the trash and the chaos. But I told you, you cannot have beauty without chaos. Okay? And even in the midst of chaos, there you can find beauty. So, 
this week, like I said, was, woo, it, it pushed me because, um, it, you know, I can feel the squeeze. I can, I can feel what, what this technology of artificial intelligence is going to do to us. You can be as angry and yelling all you want to an AI technology, and you think they're going. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to hang up on your ass, <laughs> and they and they and they're not going to care one way or another whether you're upset or not. You're not going to get through to a live person. And, and, and at some point, I'm saying at some point, you're not going to be able to reach a live person at all. And then if you do go in person, you may have to go hours away from your location just to get to a certain place to resolve things. I mean, so I'm just saying, consider, especially when it comes to your money, wherever you have your money, you need to know, you need to have all the kind of documentation known to man to prove that that money belongs to you. Your checking accounts, your savings accounts, your stocks and bonds your properties, you need to be able to produce documentation to prove that all that stuff belongs to you. And you need to be creative. I'm giving the heads up on that. Be creative about what you believe you own, whether it's property, stocks and bonds, checking and savings accounts, vehicles, I mean, all your personal property. So have the proper documentation in order is all I'm saying. Don't wait until stuff expires and then think you're going to be able to rush in somewhere. Some people do. Some people can rush into certain entities and get documentation taken care of at a snap. But that's going to be far and far and few in between. We, we, we're, under, we're under a squeeze, honey. A squeeze unlike anything we've ever experienced. And so it's going to shake, shake the ground of a lot of people's foundation. And they're going to be on shaky grounds, literally, figuratively, and metaphorically. So make sure you have your documentations in order. Make sure you can find proper documents to prove that certain accounts belong to you, certain vehicles belong to you. Because who's going to be able to determine who I am versus someone else? All of us, some of us have similar names, believe it or not. Some of us live in similar areas. And you'll be surprised, you know, especially if you have these common last names, Jones, Williams, Johnsons. I mean, if you have those kind of common names, and I know in certain people, they have these unique type of names in certain cultures. Well, you'll be surprised how many people, how many other people have that name as well. These popular names that were popping up at one point, you know, you think you're the only you know, I, I may think I'm the only Michelle and there's billions of Michelles. I may think I have the the unusual last name of Carruthers and and find out that there's you know, there 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 are more than one. How about that? <laughs> You're gonna have to be able to det um determine what belongs to you and what doesn't. Okay, how do I know this account belongs to you? And then you and then you know, you're going to have to produce all type of evidence to prove stuff belongs to you. They are printing out these receipts that have this invisible ink on it. So at some point, the ink is going to be invisible and the receipt is useless. Yes, you can take pictures of your receipts of important documents. I do that and store it. But again, you know, you have to be creative about your property. And be able to let go some of it and, and ask yourself, you know, do I need this or do I want it and why? And, and do everything you can to downsize, make things um, reasonable. Be reasonable is, 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 is what I want to say. Be reasonable. Be gentle and kind. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna treat AI once we all are talking to AI, and, be, and all of us will be managed by AI. Prepare for it. AI is going to be making decisions for us instead of human beings making decisions. We lost those opportunities thousands of years ago, maybe millions of years ago, 
to, you know, a lot of people say think for ourselves and behave and act accordingly. Our results speak for us, speak for themselves. We have not been doing that. So collectively we have failed, but I told you that's failure is an opportunity and the opportunity is upon individuals. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the whole collective of people. The whole collective of 10 billion plus and growing, uh, almost 10 billion plus and growing, is not coming together collectively. That's not happening, unfortunately. Uh, many opportunities to prove that. So individuals are going to have to to be creative and and navigate through this individually and, and do everything in your power to assist others. But this is an individual journey. But you can still have someone next to you on their individual journey too. But at some point, there will be a separation. That person may die. That person may decide to move on. And then here you are. Okay? So, what a week. I told you, what a week. <laughs> and on this Saturday, March the 16th, 2024, trial and error. You need trial and error. There's no need to attempt to rush it because all that does is make things worse. And that's where we are. You know, we have tech, technology that we rush to get out. And now the future looks bleak because, as I said, we have lost control of our thinking. And thus, we're allowing technology to do the thinking for us. Okay? So trial and error, make mistakes. You need that. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start right now and go ahead and start and continue with my day and get things done within my control and be realistic about what I can control outside of me. You know, if, if you call a, a entity say a government entity to get stuff resolved and they tell you to call back later, what you gonna do about it? You gonna call back later. <laughs> so, what a journey, right? What a journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. And trust me, I'll be back. <laughs>